Der, The Lesser Houses. This is a game of, well, the game describes it as a game of social combat. I think of it as a game of social deduction and social destruction because it is a game which is about scheming, making deals, breaking them, backstabbing people, double crossing them, all that fun stuff that ruins friendships. We play the game and after playing the game we have to play a cooperative game to heal the group. It is a very confrontational game, but hey, these days people like stuff like Game of Thrones, so this is kind of that situation that you have there. In the game, each player will control a house, but the lesser one, in a medieval fantasy-ish kind of setting, and players will try to spread scandals and suspicions in order to ruin the social standing of the other houses, and I guess relative to them, improve your own. The game is very similar to the game Bemused. In fact, most of the mechanics are the same. If you're familiar with that game, you will see many things that are familiar here, but they're also different things. Now, each player has a house represented by one of these tiles here. Each house has a special power, a special ability. So you see one such house at the beginning of the game. You also receive a conspiracy tile. Each conspiracy tile will simply indicate an, one house. These are shuffled randomly. Oh, they're shuffled and then they are assigned <clears throat> randomly one to each house. So each player will have operatives in one house. It is possible that you get a conspiracy that indicates your own house and then there are special rules for that. But in most cases, you will have somebody else's house and you secretly look at, oh, I have interest uh, in the house Yuzari. Then, randomly, you get an agenda. Actually, in the center game, you get a white tile with a, a white agenda tile and a black agenda tile, and you choose one and discard the other. These are simply different ways of scoring points at the end of the game based on, well, various things that may have to do with the house that you tag, with the conspiracy, may have to do with houses that are next to you or different conditions. And so you will have your you will have your agenda face down. Again, you know what's here, other people do not. Then we have scandal cards, they're all the same, so you may as well keep them in a deck face up so you know where they are. And then we have suspicion cards that say suspicion on them. That's, that's how deep and informative I am in my reviews. They say suspicion and they have a symbol that indicates a house. Now, you shuffle these cards at the beginning of the game, each player will receive a hand and then, well, you're good to go. Now, during your turn, you must perform one of five house actions, and once you're done with that, you will then draw a card, or you will discard one of your cards and draw two. Usually, in a turn, you will play a single card, so at the end, you get a net of one card, so your hand is stable, so always the same number. Play one, receive one. Uh, there are some actions that will allow you to play two, which is particularly cool, but that also means that you are reducing your hand uh, permanently or until you gain a game effect that gets you some cards back into your hands. Uh, also, again, you must perform one of five actions. You can perform a second one, but again, that means that your hand is reduced. Those five actions, a uh, simple one is to raise suspicion. To raise suspicion means that you play a card next to the house that has the matching symbol. Here, House Lycosia, I'll play it on House Lycosia, and you play them usually next to it. That's an action, you raise suspicion. That is, you play a suspicion card next to the matching house. You can, if you have them in your hand, play a scandal card, you can give that to anybody, and again, it just goes there. You can uh, trigger an ability. If you play a card matching your own house, suppose I'm this house here, I play a card matching my own house and I discard it, then I get to trigger my ability. And again, each house has different abilities. This one allows you to move scandal around. This one allows you to, to exchange scandal and turn it into a suspicion and vice versa, different kind of things. Then, uh, you can trigger an event. This is something you did not have in Bemused. You have some cards that are event cards, so you play it and you simply do what it says. 
Finally, about the, the basic actions, you can play Master Stroke, which is you discard two cards that match, that match, doesn't matter which house they represent, but two matching cards, you discard them and you can do one of these things here. The rule book is very helpful here. You can use it to reveal a concealed card on any house. You can remove and discard a, sca a revealed scandal from any house. You can put a scandal on any favorite house. And also then you have negate the effect. That means that these three things you can play out of turn. Out of turn, somebody's doing something, you interrupt them by saying, hey, I'm playing a master stroke and now I negate that. So that will keep everybody, oh, will I actually be able to finish this action or will somebody negate it? It's also fun that you can negate a negation. So somebody negate my, negates my action, then I have a friend somewhere says, well, I'm negating the negation. Who negates the negators? That's one of the greatest philosophical problems of all time. I do if I have those cards. There, solve the problem. Now, you can negate an event card, you can negate a house ability, remember these ones. You can negate another master stroke, again, including that negates a negation. What are you trying to do? You're trying to, well, depending on your agenda, maybe you wanna protect somebody, but the default position is you wanna cause ruin uh, to people. When a house has five cards next to itself, and because of game effects and cards that go around, they're not necessarily yours. But when a house has five cards next to it, and it makes, oh, next to it, and no more than two are scandal, so then the house is disfavored, in which case you flip it this way. The penalty now is that you have less control on the cards that you play. So regardless of the hand that you have at the beginning of your turn, when you are disfavored, and you turn the card like that to indicate that, you shuffle your hand and you draw two cards randomly. So basically instead of being able to choose among all of your cards, you're forced to use only these two cards, but you get your hand back at the end of your turn. And also that means that at least you have your full hand when it's somebody else's turn because you may still use boom uh, effects out of turn. So this is the main difference. Again, five cards, no more than two are scandals. If at least three, you have five cards next to your house and at least three of them are scandals, then you become the villain. You flip that card face up or face down, well, to the other side, to the, clearly you're now on the dark side. Although these people were kind of darkish already, but for other people, it's more obvious when they fall on the dark side. So when you get on the dark side, you, uh, play differently because basically each turn you will only uh, be able to do one of these three things. That is, you can give somebody a scandal, you can reveal a conceal card, or you can take a scandal, actually you can take a scandal and play it on anybody, or you can take a scandal and use it to replace a suspicion that somebody has. In any case, you're spreading evil, you're spreading scandals. Why is this important? Because when you're a villain, you have nothing to lose and you want as many of the people to be dragged in the mud like you are. The game continues until there's only one house which is favored, that is in good standing. Everybody else is either vilified, that is a villain, is in disfavor. When only one house is standing, then uh, the game is over. You reveal uh, agendas and you will score points if you were able to complete the mission of the agenda. But you also get default points. If you are still favored, you get 10 points minus one point per suspicion that you have next to your house and minus two per scandal. Same penalties here, but if you're disfavored, you start with only nine. If you're a villain, you start with two and you score plus one point for each of the villain around. That's why as villain, you wanna produce as many as possible. Basically, that is your base. Those are, this is your base number of points, plus again, uh, possible agendas. When there is a tie, uh, favored houses win a tie over disfavored, disfavored over villains. 
There are a couple of other rules, such as when you can reveal the conspiracy, uh, then you're able to also use the ability and there are different things that will give scandal to people. But I just want to give you a general sense of how it works. Continue to play pretty much until there is only one house which is in good standing, score points and the player with the highest total is the winner of the game. So there are the lesser houses, very similar to Bemused. Uh, the main difference is really being the more generic uh, medieval slash fantasy theme, um, the use of the events and the master strokes, or should I just say more uses for the master strokes. There is a similar uh, thing that you can do here with by combining two cards, but now you can play sets of two matching cards out of turn to negate other people's effects. And so actually these seem like small differences, but to me they're pretty relevant. For example, I was talking with some friends that have kids that are 8, 10 year old, and they were asking me about a game of social deduction, interaction, etc, etc. And I frankly hesitated to recommend Bemuse because oh, although the theme is very quirky and innovative and adults are gonna love it, I don't know that all parents are gonna be comfortable playing a game in which you're basically trying to convince someone else's protege to commit suicide, to kill themselves, to go insane. That is a dark theme. Now, mind you, um, ruining the social status of a family, then you can imagine that some of these people will suffer and maybe they'll, they'll, they'll jump from the highest tower of their castle, but it is left unsaid. And so the idea that more generically you're scheming, you're planting scandal cards. This is something that you can play with younger players. For some people, the theme maybe will be a little too generic. There are many games of this Game of Thrones, Song as Ice on, Song as Ice on Fire kind of intrigue, but frankly, I don't have any problem adding one more. As for the new mechanics, uh, the idea of playing out of turns makes the game more tense and makes the game even more confrontational than it was before. Mind you, Bemuse is already again about social combat and social destruction. But Dur gets even more like that, because then, well, I'm negating and you're negating my negation. And people get into this sort of like arm race that sometimes really, like you can imagine, with an arm race, goes to the big mushroom cloud. And before you realize it, the people that started negating each other just because they are mad, their hands now are almost completely depleted. And the person that was there peacefully sitting in the background, it was just watching the slaughter has a huge advantage, which works very well to me. This is something that you see often in games with a social element. The person that keeps a low profile wins. And it's not a problem with the design, of course, it's a problem of the human mind. We get caught into our, war, our own vortexes of petty revenges. And the game gives us an opportunity to hang ourselves and we stick our head in the, in the news and we wonder what happened? How did, was it possible? I like games that give you the possibility of making big mistakes because, of course, when you don't make them, then you have a sense of satisfaction. And sometimes the big mistake is, oh, I traded that resource for that resource. It feels pretty, pretty abstract. But this is not the case uh, with games of social interaction. The mistake is oh, I trusted you too much or I, I went for nihilistic revenge and that in the end did not work for me. Another great thing is how you have such shifting victory conditions. You want to destroy the other houses, but not too early. Somebody going rogue early on has a huge power of destroying everybody. Uh, you want to make alliances, but then also because of the secret agendas, sometimes you don't want this to destroy somebody and you see that somebody else is targeting them. So you have these very interesting shift, uh, shifting alliances, psychology, and all of these elements that really make the game fun. But really in a sense, the game is fun because of the people around it, because of the kind of very intense, very multi-layer social interaction that the game gives, gives people an opportunity to create. Some uh, Euro games you could play against an AI without noticing much of a difference, or you need human beings, you need the flaws of the human nature for the game to work. Luckily enough, there is no, there is no um, scarcity of humans or human flaws or human weaknesses out there, so you're gonna find plenty of materials that will allow you to experience the game in the way in which it's supposed to be, which is, of course, fun. Dure the Lesser Houses, an original game, a fun one,
fun, very intense, very intense from the point of view of the social interaction, but fun precisely because of that.